Hello folks. So in this video, I will introduce Kubernetes and how can we spin up a Kubernetes cluster on Azure. Well, Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system for automating application deployment, scaling it and uh, managing it as well. So containers are nothing but a sort of midway between an infrastructure as a service where we control the environment and platform as a service where we don't control the environment. Okay. Um, so Kubernetes is an open source and it was invented by Google. It is available for uh, all the cloud platforms like AWS, Cloud, uh, Google Cloud, in fact, uh, Azure. And uh, we use these platform to containerize our uh, you know, containers which are associated with any uh, specific service. So containerization is the way uh, you package your code and deploy it in any environment like a development environment, testing environment, as well as staging environment. Okay. So it's kind of a very convenient way to get the code up and running by including the associated libraries, packages, or dependencies. And then after the, you know, kind of packaging those things, uh, it as a container and then pushing it to the repository. So when I'm talk talking about repository, it's a Docker repository. Uh, we call Docker Hub. Okay. And from there, we can download this container image. Uh, of, of this particular application which we want to run in any environment okay and that environment uh, when i'm saying in any environment that is we will have everything we need and we won't be ne ne needing to install anything extra to get it up and running in the new environments so basically what happens is you are just kind of uh, uh, packaging this entire application it, its dependencies libraries etc and then creating an image out of it so once you create that image then you just push it to the uh, docker repository and uh, from that docker repository you later on uh, download the image in any environment to run it uh, successfully and in any new environment you don't have to install any software etc because that image which you have downloaded already contains all those dependencies right so let's without further delay let's uh, spin up a Kubernetes cluster. So let's go to all services here. In fact, on home as well, you can see the Kubernetes services. So click on that. Okay, and then click on add. All right. So now you will see uh, different parameters you need to fill in. So you can see my subscription detail uh, resource group is my existing resource group, which is I mean resources. Cluster name we can give. Tamil. <coughs> Q. AC. Okay. So that's our cluster name. Uh, this this is going to be rolled out in West US, so I'm keeping that. As far as Kubernetes version is concerned, there are different versions available. You can choose any of the version, but by default it picks up the default version. So I will be, I will be keeping that version only. Uh, next one is DNS uh, name prefix. So as far as DNS name prefix is concerned, it is nothing but when you are managing any cluster using API, then you need to use this option. Here I'm going to use the name I used for Kubernetes cluster, okay? So the same name. All right, and if you see the node size, you can change the size of uh, your node. Um, you know, let's choose the size, that's it. Right now it has uh, taken DSV2, correct? But you can actually choose any other uh, node as well. And you can see the details of uh, those VM sizes. Uh, for example, vCPUs to RAM is 8 GB, data disk 4, temporary storage 16 GB, and this will be the cost per month. Uh, the default it took uh, was a DS2 V2. So let me choose this general purpose only. Okay, uh, select and then you can basically choose the node count here. Okay, uh, 
so here we are creating this cluster let us say okay let's keep three uh, nodes only but you can increase your nodes based upon your needs right and you, you can see the message the maximum node count you can have is two right so that means i need to keep two here okay virtual node uh, it's in preview mode so it's disabled right now okay so here we are creating cluster uh, that means we are creating more than one computer okay so cluster means cluster of computers therefore we are going to have a one orchestration and one node uh, in fact one or uh, since i have chosen only two so there is only one uh, there's going to be only one orchestration node and one uh, worker node but if you choose another uh, i mean if you increase the count you can uh, control that limit accordingly okay so let's move on to um, authentication okay uh, so here a service principle you can see the option uh, service principle here right and so right now it has taken a default service principle right so default uh, the, the service service principle is nothing but is the account under which the nodes will run okay so that is service principle enable rbac means role based access control so if you want to uh, uh, you know have some authentication authorization enabled for it you can uh, control it through this rbac option you can click yes to uh, get it i mean uh, get this cluster authenticated and authorized before anyone proceeds further okay so this comes with this option networking we will keep the default options uh, okay so network configuration will pick basic and http application routing will be set as no okay and as far as uh, uh, monitoring is concerned uh, we are enabling the container monitoring now log analytics workspace we uh, in the previous videos i created this uh, log analytics workspace so uh, my container will be associated with this and log what and log analytics will do uh, it will enable the uh, logging uh, on my uh, cluster and it will start tracking the activities uh, on my not activities in fact uh, it will try to uh, uh, track the logging uh, activities in my uh, of my cluster okay if you don't have uh, any uh, existing log analytics workspace you can create it through this option okay tags it, it depends i mean if you want you can um, you know uh, if you want to create uh, this cluster for development environment you can tag it as a development uh, and provide the details here accordingly but now I i'm not going to uh, you know attach any tag associated with it so let's review and create let's click on it so it will take a while let's wait for it so guys you can see that validation it gave a message validation is passed okay so based on the details we have provided uh, for the kubernetes for spinning up the kubernetes cluster it validated those details and now we can click on create so it will take a while to create our uh, kubernetes cluster so let's wait for it okay now folks uh, uh, you can see that uh, the deployment is complete and it took roughly 16 minutes to uh, roll out this cluster kubernetes cluster all right folks so i will be covering uh, next topics in the upcoming video so please keep on watching and if you like this video then uh, please hit the like button share our video and subscribe to our channel as well thank you